Good morning. My name is Brent Lakeman, Executive Director at Economic Development, Trade and Tourism. Welcome to session two, the one with the most dramatic title, Support Through the Valley of Death, Committing and Validating. So uh, again, just a reminder on some of the housekeeping items that were covered previously, but I'll do a, a refresh on those. Uh, before we begin, we wanted to cover a few housekeeping items at the bottom of your screen are multiple application engagement tools you can use. All of the engagement tools are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop space. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows at the top right corner. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit them through the Q&A engagement tool. We'll try to answer these during the webcast, but if a fuller answer is needed or we run out of time, it will be answered later via email. Please note we do capture all questions. For best viewing experience, we recommend using a wired internet connection and closing any programs or browser sessions running in the background that could cause issues. You can find additional answers to some common technical issues located in the help engagement tool at the bottom of your screen. Following the session, there'll be a quick five minute break, which will allow for the session to wrap up and chat to continue before moving to the next session. So this session will focus on funding and resources for companies that are established and moved beyond the earliest stages of development. Companies at this stage have developed an initial product or service and have done testing or validated the product. Companies at this stage uh, have had some initial committed resources, but looking to attract additional investments or funding and may be at a TRL level, technology readiness level of at least four to six. Uh, today's session, you will hear from a variety of innovation ecosystem supports, including from business accelerators that can help you get access to mentorship, investors, and other support to help your company become more stable and continue to grow. So I'd like to introduce the presenters for today's session. First will be Terry Rushwalski, Executive Director at Alberta Innovates. Mark Summers, Executive Director of Technology and Innovation at Emissions Reduction Alberta. Another Terry, Terry Rock, President and CEO of Platform Calgary. Sandy Gilbert, CEO of Intergen. Michael Mekalop, Director of Operations at Creative Destructions uh, Lab Rockies. And Jason Switzer, Vice Chair, Clean Resource Innovation Network, or CRIN. So we'll get started with the first presentation, Terry Rushwalski, and I'll turn it over to you. Great. Good morning, everybody. Thanks a lot, Brent. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate the fact that uh, we're doing this and we're all getting together to talk about this. Uh, show me the money. And I'm going to tell you some things you want to hear, and I'm going to tell you some things you might not want to hear as an entrepreneur. So when we're talking about this piece about the valley of death, you know, we have to go back to that client journey. We call it the client journey. It's an entrepreneurial journey. And at that front end of the journey that we talked about this morning that Carla, Irene, and, and um, Julie talked about, entrepreneur development. You know, we want you to be successful. We're investing in your success. And it's, a, it's about connections and community and coaching. And then we get into that venture development piece where we're a little bit further along and we're leading into economic development. And this is what I really want you to hear from me is this is not a grant when we get into our programs. This is an investment. We're investing for impact. We're investing in you to be successful for the province of Alberta. And it's a really important distinction when you talk about outcomes and impacts. So who are we talking about? We're talking about our clients are going to be SMEs. They're going to be Alberta SMEs. They're technology-based. The project, as Brent described, is going to be along that validation continuum. It's scalable. It's something that we can expect to get a, a payback within five years for Alberta Innovates and entrepreneurial investments. And our metrics are hard metrics, right? We want to see some jobs. We want to see growth. We want to see exports. We want to see follow-on investment because primarily we are the first investor typically. A lot of these success stories that you hear about in the Alberta ecosystem, Alberta Innovates was the first one in, right? And we invested in that success. So we want to make sure that uh, we're getting outcomes for the province of Alberta. This is a question I get all the time. What's the big secret? What is the special sauce that I can put into that application form that all of a sudden it's going to make everybody light up? And uh, the big secret is there's no big secret. The big secret is, is that we're looking for commercial out outcomes. We're not looking 
uh, at the technology so much. Of course, we want to have the technology and we're going to check that out. But we want to know if you can get over the line, if you can get over that valley of death. And what are all those, those success factors that are going to help you get there? So that's when we say, tell me the language of traction. Is this a big enough market? You know, what does your customer discovery look like? What does your validation path look like? What, how are you going to iterate and, and uh, do those pivots? What does it look like and when? And uh, be careful when, though, when you're in that disruptive space and you say, hey, I don't have any competition. As soon as someone says to me, I don't have any competition, I suspect they haven't dug deep enough. Or maybe it's a problem they haven't figured out yet. So those are all the big secret things, and I'm going to be happy to take some questions on that one later. So our programs at a glance. So Carla talked about the micro voucher, very early stage. So now you can look at it and we map our programs across that journey, the entrepreneurial journey, and looking for those, those peaks and how we can move a company along. Now, you have to apply for each one individually. And the reason for that is, is we want to see movement. We want to see progress along that continuum. So always be thinking of that. How am I progressing? So the voucher is sort of our early stage entry. That's when you get up to $100,000. And again, 25% you put in. We want to see some skin in the game. And you can do things like you're going to hire a service provider to get your patent to create your first prototype. There's a variety of different things. And as Carla said, make sure you go back to those program guides. And I wanted to put in here um, the link between post-secondary investments, where we invest in highly qualified personnel along certain um, business plan paths, those paths that uh, we're focusing on, um, our strategic research, and also what uh, Irene mentioned, which is the Campus Alberta Small Business Engagement Fund, where we, pi we uh, partner with NSERC. Because those are the connector pieces that push into uh, a lot of these entre entrepreneurial journeys. So in that case, NSERC and Alberta Innovates both uh, put dollars in. And an example of that is Phase Sensors, who uh, actually started off in this CASB program, the Campus Alberta Small Business Engagement, and then moved over into our uh, pro uh, product demonstration uh, program. So a, a homegrown Alberta success. So we have two associate programs where we can help pay for uh, a person to be uh, in your company, the research uh, associate and a commercial associate. And those are pretty self-explanatory, what, what we're looking for. One is development of the program, of the product, and the other one is commercial. But again, always focused on that outcome. We have the product demonstration uh, program, capital access, and uh, uh, global programs that I'll talk about a little bit further. So global uh, partnerships for us, it's not about exporting so much as making that technology partner or a distribution agreement that gets you into a new marketplace. So we like to have companies thinking global as soon as they're starting off. What is that global and scale up path for, my, for me? So there's going to be some more conversations in there about what this looks like. And that's why I've got the little and beyond in there. And, and I do want to let you know that in partnership with uh, Economic Development tra uh, Trade and Tourism, the Export Readiness Micro Voucher will be relaunched on June 15th. That's a $20,000 contribution with 25% from the client uh, to get a service provider for export or market entry plan. So you can watch our website and our social accounts, the Alberta Innovate social accounts for that. Uh, we're on Instagram, face Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I also want to talk about capital access and major transactions. As a company moves along uh, into out of validation and into that scale up part, we find there's a lot of companies that need more supports. So our capital access group has uh, executive business advisors. It's a curated program. You have to have a product to get in. You have to be ready to move the needle and scale. So what we're looking for is uh, companies that want to work with someone hands on, hands on get you investment ready. So someone to help you uh, build your data room, uh, get your cap table in order, maybe do some specific connections, and uh, in some cases even walk you over and get some get a, a VC and help you with that term sheet. So very successful program. So coming soon, what's, what changes can you expect from Alberta Innovates in our uh, entrepreneurial investments place? 
existing programs, we're going to be aligning all our current programs with our business plan outcomes. So you can watch our social channels for that. We're going to be more explicit about what an Alberta firm means. So we're unique in Canada and uh, we're getting a lot of attention for that. And so there's other people coming in who maybe aren't so Albertan. So we want to make sure we're, we're uh, being very explicit about what an Alberta firm is. And we want to be explicit about those expectations for outcomes. It's not a grant. It's an investment. It's a relationship. That's why we ask you to go to a technology development advisor, get involved with your regional innovation network so that we can see your progress and participate in your progress. Our new enhancements is about that continuum and success for, uh, for impact, smaller dollars faster, aligned with specific measure, measurable traction accomplishments, and aligning our associates' activity again to those desired outcomes. So we have a few other things, commercialization programs uh, within our clean resources group. These are more targeted, industry targeted uh, programs. Digital innovation for in clean energy. Uh, watch for that at about 2021. I think they're going to be looking at uh, a new launch of that program. So that's specifically TRL 3 to 7, maybe a bit early, but they're, I, you know, we'll watch for a follow-up call there. In our health group, Accelerating innovations into care. It's really about market access. Uh, so this is where you're generating evidence for adoption. 50% up uh, uh, contribution up to $300,000. Finally, CASB, which I mentioned before, which is a great program for uh, SMEs if you need some research done. We actually take you over to a researcher and the money goes to the researcher, but you get that research done for you and some great successes out of that. And finally, Kane, where Alberta Innovates is a partner. This is for Smart Egg, and uh, I'd encourage you to go to that website because they will have their own calls uh, for their own outcomes on that. Thank you very much. Uh, I do want to direct you to our website and to also make sure that you're looking at our outcomes. This is what we call our technology commercialization um, uh, scorecard. When I say it's an investment, it's an investment for the people of Alberta. It's an investment in your success and we have outcomes. And these are the outcomes we want to look at. We want to see jobs. We want to see revenue because revenue is a, an indicator of, of jobs. We want to see follow on investment. We might be the first in, but we want to see after that, uh, um, after your dollars, of course, but we want to see uh, a continued investment, diversification, exports, and there's the piece, accelerating scale up. We measure you before, we measure afterwards. We're invested in your success. So here's all the contacts. When you get these emails, uh, you'll get all this uh, afterwards so that you know how to connect with a technology development advisor. You can contact us by email, by phone, and with an investment application portal and all of those, those uh, websites. So thank you very much and happy to take some questions or afterwards sure, thanks, as you uh, wish, Brad. Yeah, thanks, Terry. Uh, maybe time for one question. Um, just pull that one up. So question, um, if I'm an entrepreneur already who's already spent dollars on a patent and didn't know about Alberta Innovates, does Alberta Innovates look at an individual case and potentially allow the voucher to go back on an IP expense? No. Okay. Sorry, no, um, there's, no, there's no way to expand on that one. No, we don't do past things, sorry. And just maybe one other quick question. As a founder, can I be the researcher for my own company as well and get and get paid? Likely not, no. What we're looking for is, again, you know, we, another of other people have mentioned it as well. If you are the only person in the world to do that, uh, maybe. But primarily, no, we don't. And, the, you know, I'm... I think we're missing is there's a philosophical piece here, and Julie Kennett talked about it in the earlier piece, is that founders uh, have their equity play, and we're looking for skin in the game. So it's a hard uh, reality, uh, but that's, I think, what the people of Alberta are expecting, is that we don't fund founders currently. Okay. 
Thank you, Terry. Um, we're going to move to our next uh, presenter, and that's uh, Dr. Mark Summers uh, with Emissions Reduction Alberta. So take it away, Mark. Great. Yeah. Thanks very much, Brent. And uh, thanks also, Terry, for setting the stage around the Valley of Death. I'd say our approach at ERA is is different, yet very complementary to what Jerry uh, Terry just talked about. <laughs> so good morning, everyone, and uh, uh, thanks for tuning in. My name is Mark Summers, and I'm the Executive Director of Technology and Innovation at Emissions Reduction Alberta, or ERA. Uh, what I'd like to share with you over the next few minutes is just a little bit about our organization and and our role in the in the innovation and the, the funding system. So let me start by telling you who we are and a little bit about what we do. Uh, we are, of course, a, a funding organization, and we're we're based here in the province of Alberta in Canada. We have a mandate as an organization to help reduce greenhouse gas emissions and improve the economy in the province of Alberta. We carry out that mandate by investing in innovation, you know, much like all the other organizations in this session. Um, more specifically, we invest in the advancement of innovation toward commercialization. Uh, our revenues as an organization come from the carbon price that's paid by large industrial emitters in Alberta. And we reinvest those revenues through a transparent and competitive process that's focused on maximizing greenhouse gas emissions reductions and economic benefits for Alberta. And you know, more specifically, what exactly we fund are projects with clear objectives, deliverables, timelines, and a well-defined work plan and budget. And of course, as you can see from the, the title of this session, Support Through the Valley of Death, our focus is toward the latter end of the technology development spectrum as innovation and technology is proven in the lab and needs to be scaled up, tested in the field, and moved across the valley of death. Uh, you know, Brent mentioned in the opening comments, TRL four to six uh, or so. Uh, our focus is bringing technology up to TRL seven, eight, and in some cases, nine. So further to what we fund in terms of who we fund, you know, we've been very fortunate over the last 10 years to build a diverse portfolio with a very diverse set of recipients, some of which are shown on this slide. Um, so this includes everything from large multinational organizations right down to small startups inventing out of their garage. We've had projects with municipalities, with dedicated research organizations, with post-secondary institutions, with industry associations themselves, and even government research labs and uh, not-for-profit organizations in some cases. Uh, all in all, I'd say we're very open to working with just about any type of entity. Um, and oftentimes, the projects that we fund end up consisting of multiple entities. Uh, in fact, a, a project consortium that involves, for example, an innovator or a technology developer that's partnered with a, a site host, like an industrial operator or a municipality, municipality can often represent a, a really strong value proposition. But whoever the project consortium consists of, what we want to make sure as an organization is that the consortium and the team have the capacity to carry out the project and advance the innovation toward commercialization and ultimately share the outcomes and learnings of that project for the greater benefit of Alberta and, and beyond. Uh, so, you know, further again to who we fund, uh, I wanted to mention that our investments span across a number of industries and sectors of the economy in Alberta. Um, we've developed what we call a technology roadmap document that guides our investments and lays out four primary strategic focus areas for the organization. You can see here, the first is cleaner oil and gas. Alberta is an energy exporter. Um, we know we're an energy producer, uh, but we want to provide our customers with clean oil and gas products, clean hydrocarbon products. Uh, the, you know, the second is is low emitting electricity system, and this is both in terms of supply and electricity consumption. 
So this includes renewable electricity, energy storage, electrification, and a number of other things. Uh, the third is around industrial processes and products, which includes you know, decarbonization of cement and chemical manufacturing, for example, or creating products out of CO2 emissions and a number of other things. Uh, and finally, food, fiber, and bio industries, which spans agriculture, it spans forestry, forest products, bioenergy, biomaterials, and really just about anything large scale that you can put the word bio in front of. Um, and notwithstanding these four focus areas, just about any technology innovation that can reduce greenhouse gas emissions and have economic benefits at a large scale in Alberta could probably be a fit for a mandate. These, these buckets are wide enough that we can find a way to get things to fit in. Okay, so whenever I give a presentation, I know that one of the most important things I can talk about and what people often care about the most, rightly so, is, is not how awesome I think ERA is and what and the great work that we're doing, but rather how you, the audience, the innovators, um, the industry members out there can get access to our money. So, you know, we essentially got two mechanisms or two programs really to solicit proposals and to award funding. The first is through our calls for proposals or we call our challenges. We generally hold two challenges per year on average, and these are typically focused on a theme area that is both strategically relevant for the province as well as ripe with opportunities. Uh, we engage uh, with stakeholder consultation to determine uh, what those opportunities are. You know, for example, our current challenge that is open for submissions right now is focused on agriculture, forestry, and nature-based solutions. Uh, we call it our food, farming, and forestry challenge. Uh, you should check it out. Our our second mechanism for soliciting proposals is through what we call our partnership intake program. And the idea here is that we know very well that the timing of our calls doesn't work for everyone. I mean, you know, innovation doesn't happen on our timelines. So what we, we built this partnership program, you know, a couple years ago uh, to capture some of the real high quality opportunities that might otherwise slip through the cracks. And, you know, I should be clear, this isn't an open solicitation, but rather on a referral basis from within our trusted partner network, which includes 12 organizations so far, like Alberta Innovates, of course, and the Government of Alberta and uh, Natural Resources Canada, Sustainable Development Technology Canada, and a number of others. And, you know, since this slide is about our uh, offerings, I should also mention a couple elements about our funding. You know, the first is that on a per project basis, our funding ranges from about 250,000 Canadian dollars on the low end, up to around $10 million on the high end. And, and the second is that we generally always require matching funds for our investment and our payments are ultimately then dispersed on a milestone, uh, on a milestone basis. Okay, I'll, I'll move on. In terms of some helpful suggestions for those interested in accessing funds from ERA, um, there are a few simple things I can mention. The, the the first is to sign up for our newsletter. You know, we try to spread the word through our personal contacts and our networks, but honestly, the quickest way to find out about our new funding initiatives is through our newsletter. Um, the second is to do a bit of research into our, into our focus areas, even our current portfolio of projects to get a sense um, for the types of projects we invest in. Uh, and we have to do an open solicitation. Uh, and when we do an open solicitation, as we do now, I can't stress enough, uh, to read the guidelines document. Uh, you know, arming yourself with the knowledge about the process, their criteria, criteria and the required information for a submission will give you the best opportunity for success in our process. Uh, and further to that, it's worthwhile familiarizing yourself with our process, even at a high level. I will say our process is fairly rigor rigorous. We know that, frankly, it needs to be rigorous for allocating millions of public dollars into risk capital. But the point is you should know what you're getting into. And finally, this is the final point I'll make. Um, we sometimes put on webinars and workshops and lessons learned events. These are great events and can be very helpful, uh, especially if you're not already familiar with ERA and the way we work. And of course, you'll find out about these if you sign up for our newsletter. So uh, that's it for me. Thanks very much for listening. I look forward to the rest of the presentations in the Q&A. Thanks again. Thank you, Mark. Um, we're going to move to the next one. There's maybe some questions that may be common to a few of the presenters, so uh, we'll get back to you on those, Mark. 
Um, our next presenter will be Terry Rock, uh, President and CEO of Platform Calgary. Great, thanks Brent. Um, well, I'm actually here as the co-chair of the Alberta Innovation Corridor in addition to my uh, Platform Calgary uh, role. Um, and happy to be here uh, on behalf of the Alberta Innovation Corridor. This is an initiative that was uh, created by, uh, at the time, Innovate Edmonton, which is going through a, a change right now uh, in Edmonton, and uh, Calgary, uh, Platform Calgary and Calgary Economic Development uh, to make sure that our two big city uh, innovation ecosystems coordinated as much as possible, really trying to put the entrepreneur at the center of uh, our work. Um, and so we set uh, in that uh, process some goals, and I'll talk about that. Um, I'll also talk about uh, and, and some programs that, that we're working on, some initiatives that we're working on. Uh, what I'm going to give you here, and so I'm, I'm asking you to put on your blast shield because I'm going to give you a very big picture overview of the amount of support that's available in these two big, uh, two big city innovation ecosystems. And I would say that it's going to look overwhelming. Um, and I also say that uh, the fact is that there's an organization like Platform here and Edmonton has uh, Startup Edmonton, Tech Edmonton and other organizations that are here to help you navigate um, that innovation ecosystem. Um, and really, I think that's you know, sort of the, the key takeaway for me today is that there are people in these big cities that are there for you and actually throughout Alberta through the Alberta Regional Innovation Network uh, in, in eight different regions. Um, but I'm really here talking about the cities today. So uh, our goal with the Alberta Innovation Corridor uh, the start was really to put our two We believed that if we show it up together, that we will uh, make a bigger impression. If you've ever been to one of those big tech conferences globally and tried to figure out on the on the floor, the the fact is that a city of a million and a half, two cities of a million and a half, have a very hard time showing up. So if we show up together on the global stage, we can make a bigger difference. So to do that, we've done benchmarking both cities' startup genome uh, last year when. Uh, collision happened in Toronto. Remember when people could actually get together and meet uh, that we put up as two cities, got our booths right next to each other. Edmonton served uh, donuts and Calgary served coffee or the other way around. And we promoted a story of two urban centers that are uh, delivering innovation. And then the last on that point is, if you haven't logged on to start Alberta portal, please do so and see uh, a level of activity that's happening in our province and the storytelling that's starting to come out um, together as two cities through there. Uh, secondly, about advocating uh, for the innovation and startup ecosystem. So uh, many of the people on the, on this, uh, in this webinar, I'm sure, signed our open letter uh, to the government of Alberta outlining the challenges that uh, Alberta startups were facing through COVID. And we also did research uh, direct with the, the startups themselves about what was happening to them and how they could be helped and then turned that into some advocacy um, that, that hopefully will shortly. Um, and then uh, if you go on the website, you will actually see that both cities have a need to attract talent, to attract investment, and to bring companies in to grow our innovation ecosystems. And so that is uh, on the website, uh, albertainnovationcorridor.com. So what do we offer? So Calgary has an organization called, uh, I guess it's an initiative really, called the Calgary Innovation Coalition. Uh, this is the group that represents the Calgary Regional Innovation Network into Alberta Innovate. Um, and this group has committed, it's now 36 organizations. In Calgary, it is coordinated by Andrew Brown. Um, and these 36 organizations meet on a monthly basis to make sure that they're doing what they can to coordinate their support for entrepreneurs. Uh, we've organized our uh, set of offerings around, this is the Startup Commons uh, life cycle model that you you would have seen in Terry Rockwellski's presentation, um, a, a slightly uh, extended version on both sides, I believe. Um, and we've really taken this and said, you know, companies go through stages and founders and teams go through stages and they need different kinds of support at different places. 
as the as a Keystone organization in Calgary, one of the things that Bob does is make sure that there's no gaps. And we know there are gaps, and we're working on working on filling those. But you can go to the Calgary Innovation Coalition website. You can actually click through on this map and see all these places the organization spent to make sure that they are delivering in a coordinated way for you um, services. This is the overwhelming part. <laughs> so when I look at, this is uh, Edmonton's uh, survey of the offerings. Um, and uh, I am, I'm happy to be a spokesperson for Edmonton uh, folks on this, but you'll also see a similar uh, array of, of supports that are there. Um, and the Edmonton network is, is up and running and is really working to coordinate this and and provide specific support uh, where Edmonton to create a high-performing ecosystem. So you can contact those folks um, through this. So some examples of how we do this in Calgary. Um, the previous session really talked about the earliest stage minus two to zero, uh, but this is on I think probably every week you are going to be able to to uh, participate in a business model canvas session, which really orients you to the startup ecosystem, defragments it for you, and then gives you really uh, basic on how to build a tech startup. Uh, and at Platform Calgary this summer, we're actually working uh, with and paying uh, about 15 student teams from post-secondaries across uh, Calgary to participate in a summer incubator to work on their business and learn entrepreneurial skills uh, over that time uh, and that's really uh, that this is a I think about a third iteration of that program for us and we look forward to expanding it in the long run uh, then once you've uh, customer discovery uh, pro uh, program so that you actually get a disciplined approach uh, and a framework to figure out what customers want so you're not trying to shove technology down their throats, but you're actually solving a real need. Uh, we have our Junction program, which is really our signature program. That is a nine week, almost think of it as a boot camp, uh, with about 15 companies that go through it. And, and it's for first time founders with a minimum that they've committed to their business. And over that nine weeks, you are surrounded with a array of advisors and uh, volunteers from the community that have been there and done that. And they help you create something that is appropriate to the stage of your business. And when you're done, when you graduate, you will be able to talk to an investor and sell your business and take it to the next level. We're also really happy to be partnering with uh, Foresight out of British Columbia to deliver an accelerator, which takes a lot of those same principles but makes it very focused into clean tech and then takes advantage of the network that Foresight has to take, make you, get you really connected with your business when, when you take off. And once you're established and you're rolling, we create a peer network with CEOs. Uh, you can kickstart your sales and marketing through programs with 3 to 1 Growth Academy. And then uh, companies that are really starting to scale have access to the Venture Mentoring Service of Alberta. This is a, this is a group of volunteers that surround you with support to take your venture um, and, and as a your adventure as a leader to the next level. In Edmonton, there's uh, I, can't, I can't go into too much detail, but you can see that it's arrayed in the same kind of way. Uh, really introductory programs, some intense programs with their pre-flight, pre-flight and propel, uh, some focused accelerators in health. And then I think that, uh, I don't know if Zach is, is on this webinar, but the Startup TNT Investment Summit is a really fantastic stage-gated process to bring a community around startups and get investment into them. Finally, they have the Venture Mentoring Service uh, as well uh, in, in Edmonton, and, the, and Tech Edmonton has an advisory panel that can help you once you've hit that growth stage. So lots of people to contact. Of these organizations through the Alberta Innovation Corridor site, Calgary Economic Development, Economic Development, which also holds Innovate Edmonton. Uh, then you've got the Edmonton Regional Innovation Network, Platform Calgary Startup Edmonton. All those are links. So when you get this presentation, uh, you will be in a position to reach out. Um, know that there is a big community of people out there waiting to help. Uh, they're experienced, they're connected, and they can that next step in your journey. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Um, we'll 
maybe we'll cover one quick specific question. Um, you may get this quite often is, do you work with companies outside of Calgary and Edmonton? I assume from Alberta. Uh, yeah, so our programs, uh, especially uh, in a post COVID, um, we, <laughs> Uh, so the two things there. The first is that we run the startup visa program um, it, out of our office. So we actually field uh, inquiries from around the world and help people in Alberta. Um, and that program is currently being sort of redeveloped. But our junction program has every cohort of junction we've done for now has had an international firm. We would welcome companies from all over the place. What we really wanna make sure we do though, is we, we would be there to assist our partners in other networks. So we would do that in partnership with Leftbridge uh, and you wanna take an online program with us. We also have those connections and we'll make sure that you get that in-person connection. Um, we've definitely noticed that that content is one thing, but but actually having a person there to help you understand it and walk you through it is really important. So that coaching we do is probably makes this you know worth the time and, and effort because you can go and YouTube video yourself if you want, but who do you have that's been there, done that, that can help you solve your problem in real time? Okay, thank you, Terry. Um, we're gonna move to our next presenter, and that's Sandy Gilbert from Intergen. So, Sandy, you're up. Hello, well, I'm really pleased to be here. Uh, excited to be a part of this um, great group of ecosystem partners that are helping our entrepreneurs um, navigate from ideation right through to um, scale and growth. Um, just a bit of background on me, I um, am privileged to lead the Intergen Initiative here in Calgary, but I also uh, spend a lot of time in the angel space as the chair of the National Angel Capital Organization. So I have worked with a long time, for a long time with uh, young entrepreneurs that are navigating how to raise capital. But why Intergen? We came upon uh, the concept around Intergen because we felt that there was an, a huge amount of uh, experience in our DNA here in Calgary and in Edmonton of our senior executives that had built great global businesses. And they were there was a disconnect between them and the young entrepreneurs that were building the new economy and the next economy in, in, um, in Alberta. So with, our, with the vision of our founders, which is Jim Gray and uh, Brian Faleski, we built a two-pronged approach. We said, first of all, we need to build a platform where experienced uh, leaders can build a profile, uh, let us know what their experience is, give us how much time they have, what their um, expertise is and how they want to help in the innovation space. And then secondly, um, build scaling companies that can say, this is where we really need help. So the gap that we serve is really in that early uh, commercialization side where you've probably raised some money You've now got to hit the market ground running. You've got market uh, product market validation. That's where we come in. So the Intergen Connect is a technology platform. We call it, you know, the Tinder for talent. So when you build a uh, profile, whether you're a scaling company or a business leader, in the back room we uh, match those um, those profiles, and then we connect those individuals together. The second part of Intergen is a fund. So we created a private a venture fund that is focused on scale. So we're looking for companies that are generating at least a million dollars a year in ARR that have a, um, a need to raise probably between three to $5 million and then um, actually will, um, will take that money to go into the market and get adoption. So we've made five investments in, in the uh, Alberta space right now and about to close on a couple of more. So um, that's kind of the general thing about, um, about who we are. So um, I talked a little bit about who we serve. Um, I'm just trying to get my slides moving forward. Right, there we go. One more. Okay, sorry guys. So who we serve? Um, we actually uh, serve two markets, obviously. So we talked about the, the technology platform that's at the heart of us. So that's where it's an engaged community where people actually get connected. 
we're looking for um, entrepreneurs that are at all stages, really. So if you're just an early stage entrepreneur, but you need a contact with someone in an industry or with some experience in, you know, contract negotiation or anything along that line, any entrepreneur can build a, a, a profile um, on our platform. And then they'll get matched in the background and the connections all start to happen. And most importantly, we're excited about our senior business leaders that are actually getting connected with this community and are able to help. When we talk about the valley of death, um, we really look at the sectors we serve. And this uh, slide, if you can see this slide, is really um, exactly where we fit. So you can see in the continuum of a company that is um, raising capital, I'm not sure that slide's coming through, but there we go. Um, they, oh, sorry, I'm getting a back one, guys. Somebody's moving my slides, apologize. Um, great. Um, so you can see on this slide that early on, people are raising capital really by bootstrapping. They're getting friends and family involved. They get some angel money and now they're looking to raise you know kind of that two million to ten million dollar range and that's where we feel there's a real gap in the um, alberta marketplace so that's where the intergen fund comes in and that's how we actually connect with other funders to ensure that we can grow our companies here in alberta and not where else to get that capital what do um, with our um, with our uh, audio our um, profiles? So we uh, really do a number of things. So we connect people through uh, executive breakfasts, um, where we get together with a couple of companies. We get together with a couple of um, uh, our business leaders. We put them in a room. Today we're doing it all virtually, and it actually is working out very well. Um, and they these. The excitement in that room is unbelievable, actually, because you see these business leaders that actually haven't been exposed to um, to this um, innovation space, and they get excited about what's going on instead of so concerned about what's happening in our traditional economies here. And when you put those two intergenerational groups together, success happens. Really, really, really very exciting in those areas. We also do a Wine Wednesday where we actually bring together an entrepreneur. We had Hanif um, from Simand a couple of weeks ago, which was awesome, just raised $70 million, talking about how he got there. We had Sandeep from the uh, the president of the Chamber of Commerce a week earlier. We even have an oil analyst from RBC. So it's just bringing people together to have a conversation about what's going on in the Alberta economy. Um, and we're just launching our masterclass. So it's a scale-up um, masterclass series. It's a seven-part series that takes uh, entrepreneurs that are at that stage to really scale their businesses through how to deal with sales, what's your sales funnel, how do you do leads, how do you keep focused on what your, your market that you're trying to attract. It has a capital uh, plan and it has a governance plan. And we're doing that in partnership with 3 to 1 Growth Academy, RBC, BDC, Exhibition Capital, uh, Round 13 out of Toronto. So it's a really immersive, experiential learning experience for both our business leaders and our companies. I think we're sold out in that, but we can um, check on that if you um, get, get through to us. Um, so really, uh, they asked me if I could go do a helpful hints for the last part of what I'm doing here. And if I look at what I say my helpful hints are, I would say that um, my helpful hints really are to think big. Uh, scaling a company doesn't have by, happen by accident, so focus on what you can be, not on what you are. Um, prepare to scale, so get ready and build processes and delegate to others. At this time of scaling, entrepreneurs can get bogged down in everyday things, and you really need to learn how to build those processes in order to make it a, a replication and make it easy to happen. It's also a team sport, so create a culture that attracts and rewards engaged and diverse team members. And customer first, so never lose sight of great customer service and don't compromise quality for growth because delighted customers are your best advocate to grow your business. So that's it for me. Um, I will uh, leave it at that. 
Yeah, you can reach out to us at intergenconnect.com and build profiles um, or contact me directly, obviously, at sandy at intergenconnect.com. So thanks. Great. Uh, thank you, Sandy. Um, we're going to go to the next presenter then, uh, Michael McKillop with Creative Destruction Lab Rockies. Uh, please take it away, Michael. Super. Thank you. Just going to tee up my slides here. Let's see. I think that'll get us to the audience. Maybe. Sorry, I'm not sure if I've got the right one queued up. Am I correct? I'm not seeing it. Oh, there we go. Good to go. Thank you. Okay, uh, so my name is Mike McKillop. I'm the Director of Operations for the Creative Destruction Lab Rockies based out of the Haskane School of Business in Calgary. Also the Acting Director of Operations for our global network, which I'll talk about as we go through. Uh, what we do at CDL is we help entrepreneur scientists accelerate the growth of their potentially massively scalable businesses. Uh, our site in Calgary, so it's one of eight around the world, uh, we've been operating since 2017. Uh, and we've been partnered with our friends at uh, Western Economic Diversification for just over one year now. Mission of CDL is to enhance the prosperity of humankind through the rapid scaling of science-based companies and a new approach to business education that combines economic theory and learning by doing to nurture entrepreneurial mindset. All of that to say, uh, we look to find and support science that's going to have world-changing impact. So who we are. Um, Creative Destruction Lab is a program for seed stage, massively scalable science-based companies. Uh, our program employs an objective setting uh, process. This helps technical founders uh, learn from the insights of experienced entrepreneurs and operators to increase the probability of their success. We operate eight sites, uh, each tied to a business school. And while each site, uh, like ours, uh, leverages the strengths of their local ecosystem, uh, the companies from anywhere in the world are able to apply and we support each other throughout our, uh, our network. So uh, by the end of the, sorry, during the 2019, 2020 program year, uh, we supported 375 companies around the world. Uh, since 2012, uh, we've supported over 1,500 founders, representing more than 900 companies that participated in the CDL program, and the successful commercialization of cutting-edge science achieved through the program has led to the creation of $5.8 billion in equity value creation. So who do we serve? Um, so essentially, we create a marketplace, uh, a marketplace for judgment. Uh, so what you see on the slide uh, is a layout of how we do uh, one of our sessions. Uh, we hold five sessions a year for companies that get into the program, the Calgary site. These ones are uh, Calgary-based for November, for January, for March, and for May. And then we do a super session in Toronto where we bring everybody together from all across the network. We didn't do that one this year, but I'll talk a little bit later about what we did as a substitution program. So for any company that's in our program, having spent the morning uh, for any one of our sessions meeting with a uh, hand-selected group of mentors, um, ventures are discussed in an open forum. Uh, by our group of fellows, associates, scientists, supporting MBA students and our corporate partners. The idea is to come to three crystal clear objectives. Any uh, new venture CEO is going to have a dozen things that might be on her mind uh, for what she might have to do over the next coming months. What this group's goal is for that day is to narrow this down to three single crystal clear actionable objectives that that founder uh, can work on over the next two months to increase her trajectory and her uh, likelihood of success. And then of course we check back and see how those have gone. This is a competitive program to get into. It's also a competitive program to stay in. Um, while every mentor, correction, every venture will leave every session with a set of objectives, the way to continue in the program is to get voted forward by one of our mentors and that vote comes with the commitment of time. So a company uh, to continue through our program needs to have continued mentor support and mentors that continue to volunteer four hours of their time over the next uh, uh, two months in between our uh, sessions. Here's an example of some of the alumni companies uh, that we've worked with over the past couple of years at our Calgary site. Here's our offerings around the world. I mentioned this because uh, we direct companies to where they uh, best fit. Uh, each one of our schools has a specialization uh, here in Calgary. Uh, we specialize in prime sciences and energy transition. Next year, we'll be adding an ag uh, component as well. Uh, and our UBC office uh, focuses on health, prime science. We have Toronto with a multitude of selections. Montreal focusing on
Excuse me. It just it sounds like we may be frozen some for some folks here, so just bear with us. Uh, hopefully, uh, that technical difficulty will be sorted out. I think we're still having a difficulty. Hopefully someone can hear me on this. Uh, we'll just wait a few more minutes. Sounds like people can hear me. Um, I'm just wondering if maybe Mike, uh, if we can flip over to Jason to give it a try and see if that uh, improves things. Jason, are you able to uh, go straight in? Don't think I can hear Jason. Do you have my audio now? Can you oh, hear me I now? I can hear you now, Jason. Yeah, and I can see you, so I think we might be okay. So apologies, everyone, uh, with Michael's presentation. We didn't get all the way through, but I think we'll just need to move straight to uh, you, Jason. Uh, Jason Switzer with the Clean Resource Innovation Network, as well as uh, with the Alberta Clean Tech and Industry Alliance. So uh, let's see if this works out for you, Jason. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm here really today to present uh, just a bit of a... Um, uh, an appetizer to what what I hope will become a, a key player in the uh, innovation ecosystem in Canada, the Clean Resource Innovation Network. Um, recall that some years back, um, Minister Baines, uh, Innovation, Science and Economic Development, <clears throat> launched a call for uh, super clusters um, with the idea that Canada would launch uh, five or six major um, industry-led uh, innovation uh, funding mechanisms focused on really driving up the, the clock speed of innovation in each of those industry sectors. One of those uh, groupings, one of the efforts that uh, came together as a result of that was focused in oil and gas um, and is uh, today uh, stood up um, as the Clean Resource Innovation Network. Um, leadership of, of CRIN, um, is, uh, well, it's led by Joy Romero, the president of CRIN, VP of Innovation at uh, Canadian Natural. Um, I'm one of uh, two vice chairs. I represent the uh, collective voice of Canada's clean tech entrepreneurs um, on, on behalf of the Alberta Clean Technology Industry Alliance, which, uh, which I'm the executive director for. Uh, we also have Glenn McCrimmon representing Husky. Um, Ginny Flood, formerly with Suncor, is the uh, chair of the board of directors. Uh, Tana Short, leading the work that CRIN is undertaking to mobilize the innovation ecosystem around oil and gas. And then James Dunn, um, uh, external innovation uh, lead for Imperial, who um, is coordinating the work on the various technology challenge focus areas. Um, and once again, CRIN is, is really a voluntary effort. It's a, a, a network of networks. Um, focused on um, positioning Canada as the global leader in producing clean hydrocarbons from source to end use. Um, and, and in that role, 
uh, not creating a new organization as much as knitting together the various pieces and individual sectors. So whether that's government partners, and many of them are here today, um, but also the producers, the energy service companies, um, the buyers. So, um, you know, the buyers of hydrocarbons across numerous markets, whether that's uh, fuels, uh, materials, chemicals, and so on, um, as well as the uh, entrepreneurs, the many entrepreneurs working in this space, and the various financial players, ranging, of course, from uh, seed investors and angels right through to commercial banks and and major lending institutions. Um, so the role of CRIN is really to accelerate the, the pace at which technology is able to move from, from uh, prototype to widespread adoption across the sector, where it has a significant benefit uh, environmentally and in particular in, in the current context around decarbonization, but of course, including um, the various elements of um, environmental performance. The the way to get involved, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this again, is you need to become a member. Um, and, and becoming a member really is as simple as signing a social contract. Um, very similar, modeled in fact, on Rainforest Alberta. Crin has a social contract up on our website. By, by going through that and signing on, you then uh, are eligible to receive our, e our, our newsletter, um, which will keep you apprised as we start to roll out various programs and activities. Um, just a, a bit of a word, um, as of last week, we had about 1,400 members. You can see they make up a, a very significant um, uh, representation across Canada, across sectors, across the individual components of the ecosystem that I shared in that earlier slide. Um, uh, and, and that membership is growing every day. Um, and I think as we start to become more active, now that we're standing up the organization more formally, um, you'll see a, a, a lot more activity, uh, both within uh, the formal CRIN structure, but also, and, and this is, I think, where, where CRIN will be particularly important, is creating those collisions between, um, between organizations and individuals that will allow things to move forward more quickly. Um, CRIN is focused on a number of technology theme areas, uh, digital oil and gas, cleaner fuels, uh, low emission value-added products, land and well site remediation, novel hydrocarbon extraction, uh, water technology development, and methane abatement. Uh, each of those you can understand is a significant priority within the oil and gas sector. Um, but what you'll see here is also that the leadership of these working groups is um, uh, not necessarily from the producers, but but from a mix of, of organizations, uh, technology startups, uh, oil and gas companies as well, um, but, but many different players within the ecosystem. And I think what you'll see in those individual working groups focused on defining and um, uh, strategizing around how to address the, the real challenges that um, uh, impede the competitiveness and environmental performance of the Canadian oil and gas sector are, uh, you know, like-minded individuals who really believe that we need to work together to define the problems. And in defining the problems, we can start to bring forward solutions that will change the game for, for Canadian uh, hydrocarbons. Let me just focus on uh, a couple of these theme areas to give you a, a sense for what we're talking about. So low emission value-added products, that would be things uh, such as taking uh, bitumen and converting it into carbon fiber or other kinds of value-added products, partial upgrading technologies, um, other kinds of um, lithium co-production, for example, other ways of extracting incremental value from the skill set and resources uh, that are part of the oil and gas sector. Um, Digital oil and gas, of course, is a very exciting area and, of course, cuts across a number of the different areas. And, of course, uh, many of us will be familiar with the uh, significant opportunity um, that's been uh, set out through the uh, commitment by, by Canadian oil and gas, both um, within individual companies, but also led by government around significant reduction in upstream uh, methane emissions. Um, which is a, a combination of both implementation of existing technology, uh, but also development of more efficient and effective uh, monitoring and um, measurement technologies as well. So, of course, there's a lot going on under each of these. I encourage you to familiarize yourself with them. And as we start to um, tell the story of these challenges in a more coherent way, I think you'll, you'll see a lot of action in this space. Um, 
a few uh, uh, kind of thoughts around what, what we're really talking about here. I mean, the oil and gas sector is a tremendous beachhead potentially for innovation. Um, and, and, and maybe in that, you know, thinking about other areas where oil and gas has been a, uh, a beachhead for innovation that's spilled out into other sectors. You know, the largest buyer of solar panels in Western Canada uh, through the 2000s was actually the oil and gas sector, which was using it for uh, replacing uh, diesel for, for supplying um, uh, electricity to remote, um, not, you know, off-grid um, infrastructure. You know, similarly, I would say there are a number of opportunities, whether you're talking about digital uh, deployment, use of drones, um, uh, advanced analytics, uh, material science plays, and so on. There's there's just a tremendous opportunity for the oil and gas sector to play a role as a beachhead market for innovation that has de deployability in other sectors. Um, I guess, you know, a final thought around how CRIN is unique or different, uh, it's really that that this is about building relationships. It's about mobilizing the country. Um, the the presence of these blue chip oil and gas producers can offer some certainty to other kinds of investors that if they validate the technologies, that there's going to be a market there. Um, and of course, we're talking about you know an industry which has been you know roughly eight percent of uh, Canada's GDP. Um, it's a tremendous opportunity. And as companies move forward with with uh, net zero. Uh, emissions commitments, as many companies have done already, um, you will you will see a tremendous focus on innovation as as a pathway for achieving those goals, um, which creates a great opportunity for technology innovators across numerous sectors. Uh, finally, I guess you know think of Crin as an amplifier. Uh, it's about um, supporting. It's a recognition that that really in and you know to to put it in in simple words that uh, many of the world's most significant challenges, whether you're talking about climate change, poverty, uh, or or meeting the the needs of, of a world of nine billion people, requires, you know, uh, all paddles to be uh, in the water, going in the same direction, and and um, and that's really what what Crin is intended to do, uh, as well as you know, it requires kind of cultural change, uh, working together and viewing the whole as greater than than a zero sum uh, kind of competition between the parts. So finally, join CRIN, become a member, um, sign up and uh, watch this space as we move forward in launching what I, I hope will, will prove to be a leading catalytic force for innovators across Canada. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Um... So we have a lot of questions, a couple uh, that are maybe specific uh, for your presentation, Jason, especially on that last slide, joining CRIN. There was a question, uh, is there a membership fee for joining CRIN? It may depend on the type of company, I imagine. No, there's no fee for joining, Brent, and thanks for asking that. Again, it's free to join. All that's required is a commitment to the, um, the set of values, um, which similar to the rainforest commitments are around, um, you know, agreeing to work together, um, to take a phone call, uh, to set up a meeting to um, essentially support each other in making this work. Um, Canadian oil and gas sector, and really Canada, uh, we, we need to think much bigger than, than our borders, and, and we're a small country. We need to work together to solve these problems. Okay, um, I'm going to open it up for some broader questions for some of our other panelists. Hopefully everyone's still uh, available. Um, I know, Sandy, we didn't have any questions for you earlier, but there was a couple uh, that are kind of in the same same broad area. So uh, does Intergen invest in life science companies and does it cost anything to build a profile? And as a related question, uh, what about omics fields like metabolomics? Um, thanks for that question. Uh, Intergen really is focused on um, scale technology. We have not done a bioscience investment at this is our expertise. Um, so generally, the investments that we made thus far have been in um, enterprise um, SaaS, um, B2B. Um, but we look at anything, and if there's a good uh, collaborative partnership around the investment, we would take a look for sure. So does that answer that question for you? I think so, yes. Great. Um, I'm going to ask a question probably for um, maybe starting out with Terry and Mark. Um, are there any supports for companies that are adopting new technologies for the first time in a country or in Canada or in Alberta? 
uh, that may have been deployed elsewhere out, out of Canada. So do we have supports for those types of applications? Uh, I'll take that one first. So uh, for entrepreneurial investments, maybe, it depends. So for our perspective, um, there are two parts of Alberta Innovates. If it's something that's going to be industrialized and you need to uh, um, – you may be wanting to talk to our clean resources group uh, about that technology. If it's something that can be adopted and make a difference to Alberta on, on the environmental piece and bring that piece of technology in. From the entrepreneurial investments piece, uh, we are looking for, you know, if it's something that you're licensing in, uh, we're going to want to see um, what you're doing that's different with that technology that's going to make a difference um, so that you can then turn around and make it because remember we're talking about revenue and exports so if you're bringing in something in and you're licensing it in and you're going to distribute it no that's not what we do um, if it's something that you're licensing in and um, you're simply displacing an already existing technology again no that's not what we do uh, but there is uh, that piece that might be a make a environmental difference which would be our clean resources people or possibly health Mark? Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks, Terry. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear me. I'll, I'll add to that and mention that this is something that probably fits a little bit better in ERA's portfolio, typically speaking, than, uh, than the Alberta Innovates portfolio. And the short, the short answer is Yes, it's a, it's a little more complicated than than that. But uh, you know, if if I refer back to my presentation earlier, I talked about we you know we focus on the the latter end of the TRL spectrum, um, which includes you know first of kind commercial deployment of innovative technology, and and sometimes that first of kind can in fact include uh, innovation or technology that's been commercially proven or deployed elsewhere, but it's never been done before in Alberta. It, you know, it may be the one one thing I'll mention, um, it's worthwhile mentioning as a, a, a caveat to that is that we are, our funding is, is not reserved for, or generally we won't support opportunities where there's no sort of novelty or innovation or or risk involved i mean the, the purpose of our funds generally is to share risk with innovators and industry operators and so if there's you know if there's some sort of uh, tech technological advancement bringing it to in the province if it's never been uh, to test it in in our with our particular feedstocks or or um, uh, geographical with with cold weather performance or there's some sort of uh, novelty and and technical risk then 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 yes um, and that can you know there's certainly some gray area between first of kind in Alberta and commercially available and so the best thing is you know ha have a conversation with us or uh, look at our programs but yeah we've we have funded opportunities that fall into that. Uh, description in the past. Great, thanks, Mark. Um, question, hopefully we can get Michael, uh, I think he's available now. Um, question from Creative Destruction Labs. Uh, how can, it may have been covered in the presentation that we missed part of, but how uh, can uh, an entity join the program wherein you help narrow down actionable objectives? Is there a fee to participate? Oh, 100%. Michael, you... Yeah, no, I'm, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good, good. Um, no, uh, and sorry for the drop off, not sure what the issue was, uh, but 100%. Um, so there's two programs of note that a company might be interested in. First, we are doing a recovery specific program this summer um, that focuses on uh, public health and economic recovery applications, mostly in the data space. So uh, if a company is interested in doing that, we're taking applications until the 26th of June. Um, and uh, that one you can find on our website, just Google Creative Destruction Lab and it'll come right up. Uh, and then for the core program, again, we've got lots of different offerings. So uh, we have a prime science one here in Calgary, a uh, lot of medical devices in that one, for example. But if you're a medical device company, there's also opportunities maybe in our BC office or a Toronto one. Uh, same thing, you can apply for that one online. Uh, you can uh, ping us at info at creativedestructionlabs.com. Uh, you can contact me, happy to uh, discuss. And we're taking applications for our core programs around the world um, up until the 10th of August uh, for our next year's cycle. And a reminder, the Calgary-based programs are the 
prime science, uh, energy, and uh, our new agricultural stream. Um, but uh, again, if you're an AI company, if you're a supply chain company, if you're a retail company or an oceans company, uh, we've got a spot uh, in other CDL labs that we mutually support. Well, great, thanks. Um, I'm gonna try and sneak one last question in. I know there's many that we couldn't get to, but um, this one, uh, again, might be pertinent more for Mark and Terry Roshwalski. Um, can the industrial share, I guess around a funding application, be through the assets or services, or does it always have to be cash? No, we do. There's uh, sometimes when we ex uh, accept in kind as well. Um, the best thing is to go to your program guides and read them because they will actually say and, and outline what uh, what can be expensed and what's involved and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, yes, more with the pro uh, product demonstration program. Yeah, I'll jump in quickly and echo that uh, for our programs. Check out the, the guides. We have an eligible expenses cost guidelines document that lays that out. There's some uh, traditionally what we call in-kind costs that, uh, that that we can contribute toward um, and some, some that we don't. Probably uh, better to have a more detailed offline conversation if there's something specific you're thinking about. Great, and thank you, Mark and Terry. And uh, again, I know there were lots of questions, uh, some very specific to some of the entities, I think a few at the end on CRIN. So uh, my understanding is there will be some responses prepared. Uh, some of the materials will all be provided that should have some of the details you're looking for. Um, but I guess it's time now to wrap things up. I'd like to, uh, I guess, first thank all of our presenters for the uh, excellent presentations. Again, we apologize for uh, some of the technical difficulties here, uh, learning experience. Uh, next up is session three, support for growth, scaling and establishing, which will start right after this very, very short break at 1145. So uh, if any of you wish to stay on this session, we can continue briefly with any discussions uh, through the chat functions or the, the Q's and A's. Thank you, everyone. Not sure, Jason, if you're still on the line, uh, maybe some of the participants, there was some uh, uh, questions just around any current funding rounds that CRIN may have. I know you had a lot of uh, links to other initiatives like PTAC and so on, but um, is there anything that's kind of live and you know, fairly recently with CRIN? All I can say on that is watch the space. Um, we're, we've been in a long discussion with government around this and we're hoping to be able to announce something like that soon. Um, but you know, ultimately, um, CRIN will succeed on the basis that it becomes uh, a way for companies, for solutions developers to bring ideas forward that um, uh, address the interests and needs of the oil and gas sector um, and move things into, into validation and deployment more rapidly. Um, the funding is a nice part of it, but don't forget that as a collective, the oil and gas industry Spend about, spends about $1.2 billion a year on uh, research, development, and deployment, which makes it the largest single investor in innovation in Canada. Um, that's going to be a lot bigger than any any kind of fund that might come out through, uh, through a, a provincial or federal program. Great. I got one other one. This kind of I'm interested in the answer here. Uh, does CRIN work with any exporting companies to take new technology to other countries? So a bit more of that export trade flavor. Is that uh, an objective, or is it really around the domestic uh, applications? Well, you know, it's a great question. Um, we've initiated a partnership with the uh, the Federal Trade Commissioner Service to um, help promote uh, companies active in each of the domains. Um, that are identified, so those seven tech theme areas. So for example, methane abatement, that's a, a global problem. There's a, a sort of global mobilization through the World Bank um, and through the, um, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, the, the signatory countries around that and, and the Paris Accord uh, to uh, you know, decarbonize, demethanize um, upstream oil and gas. So there's huge export opportunities into other markets and particularly like-minded states uh, in North America, as well as European oil and gas producing countries. So, it, I, I mean, the answer is yes. And, you know, again, we're going to need to kind of build those relationships as CRIN sort of stands up and starts to do more.
Brent, I don't think I can hear you. Good point. Um, sorry, we're still getting a few questions and I know people may want to run off to the next uh, session, so please uh, do, the, do that if you need to. But uh, I might answer this next one. As a grad student with an innovative idea in clean tech area, what are the best steps to follow? I just wanted to highlight, um, we do have one uh, pilot program called Green STEM, which is through the U of A, uh, the University of Calgary and the University of Lethbridge for uh, postdocs, uh, math, anyone with a master's degree uh, that would like to pursue more of uh, the entrepreneurial side of it rather than the research side. And there has been some support provided to uh, those individuals. It's a competitive process to become a Green STEM fellow. Uh, and we're kind of in the second round of that initiative, uh, uh, the pilot program. So if you want to learn a bit more about Green STEM, I'd be happy to connect you. Uh, I think we can get more information on that through uh, the EDTT website or uh, through my shop. Uh, in Alberta Economic Development, Trade and Tourism, or with universities. Um, so I think with that one, I'm going to call it a call it a day here. I do want to get to the other sessions myself, but uh, thanks all again, all of our uh, attendees who are still here, Terry, Mark, and and Mike and Jason. So I really appreciate all the support and uh, all the questions coming in. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you.